In this video, I'm going to give you an overview and demonstration of this Raycal 6103E digital radio test set. Now what this device is, is basically it's a piece of lab equipment uh, that's designed to carry out specific tests on cellular devices. Um, this particular one, being the 6103E, is designed for uh, obviously a digital cell phone such as GSM based devices. And in fact, this particular machine supports three different GSM standards. It supports PCS 1900, uh, GSM 900, and DCS 800. Um, but there are different versions of these uh, machines that support different protocols. Um, so for this demonstration, I'm gonna be testing this device using a first generation original iPhone, as you can see I've got right here. Um, you can see that this is an eight gigabyte model. Obviously not that that makes any difference here. And it is running iPhone OS version 1.0, as I'll show you right here. So yeah, as you can see, uh, we're running iPhone OS 1.0 right there. Now what makes this kind of unique is these days, obviously, most carriers no longer provide a 2G or Edge uh, service for devices like this. So in most cases, you can't really use them on any kind of service. Now that's what this device will actually allow you to do, sort of. And by sort of, I mean that the capabilities and the, the features of this thing are pretty limited in a from a practicality standpoint. But of course, this machine isn't designed for practical use. It's designed for testing devices, which it works very well at doing, of course. So with that, uh, the first thing I wanna show you here is actually how to set up a SIM card uh, to be compatible with this device. And once we get that SIM card set up and inserted into our original iPhone here, uh, we can go ahead and actually connect the iPhone to this device as it serves as sort of a very low power and very limited cellular BTS or base station, if you wanna call it that. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a Windows machine. Um, I've got this programmable SIM card right here. I've actually got a set of these about, I think about five or six of them. And I also got a smart card reader, as you can see here, that's actually specifically designed for SIM cards. Now there is a specific piece of software that came with this adapter. Um, I will put a link to that in the video description if I can. And uh, that's what we'll be using to program the necessary data onto this SIM card so a phone with it inserted will work with this test set. So with that, I'll go ahead and get this connected to a Windows machine and show you that process. All right, so as you can see here, I've now got switched over to a Windows machine and I've got the software open right here that came with that uh, smart card reader, as I told you earlier. Um, so the application you're gonna need is this one right here, grsimwrite.exe. Um, so, of course, before we open this, the first thing I'm going to do is plug in the smart card reader. As you can hear, that was connected now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the SIM card into the smart card reader. Now, I don't know if you have to use this specific smart card reader or not when programming these specific SIM cards, uh, but I'd assume it would work with pretty much any smart card reader in any machine, um, as long as you have programmable SIM cards that you can use. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the SIM card in now. All right, and the SIM card was installed. Uh, as you can see, the machine doesn't actually install the driver for it, but it still works just fine, even with that being the case. So now we're, ju we're just gonna go ahead and open up this utility. And as you can see, it detects our smart card reader here. Um, and for the first test, just to make sure everything's working, I'm gonna go ahead and select read card. And as you can see, it is reading here, and that sound means that an operation has completed successfully. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to input the correct information to match that of the actual test set. Um, so I've got all that info here in a text file, and I do actually have a manual that came with that Raycal test set, uh, which I actually got about six years ago or so. Um, and that had all this info explained in it, and you can actually also access this info with the test set itself. There's actually a page that shows you what the information needs to be in the desired SIM card. 
Um, so with that there, we're just going to go ahead and move these out of the way here. The first thing we need to do is set the pin. Now, as you can see, the correct pin data is just eight zeros here. And as you can see, the pin up here is set to one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and change that to all zeros. Just like so. And then as you can see, the PUK um, also up here, all eights in this specific tool by default. We're just going to change it to the values specified by the test set. Okay, and that's all set there. And the last thing we need to set up here is the ADM, uh, which should just be 80. So, of course, it's got to be this length here. So, we're just going to pretty much put in all zeros. And for the last two digits here, we're just going to put in 80. So that should set the ADM to 80 as intended. Um, so now the next thing we need to do is set up the actual SIM card parameters here. Now the IMSI um, has to be this. And in fact, that's actually their default here. So we'll just paste that in both. As you can see, it's the same thing, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and as you can see here, we've got LTE parameters and GSM parameters. Now for this instance, the only thing that really matters is the GSM parameter. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and set everything and make sure everything matches. Um, so the next thing and most important thing we need here is the KI. And this serves as a cryptographic authentication key. Um, if you're using a standard cellular carrier between your carrier and the phone, um, the SIM card actually runs a routine and basically creates a hash from this key. And then if that hash matches the carrier's hash, that's how the authentication is, is done. Uh, but of course, normally you wouldn't be able to get this out of a standard SIM card, but since we know what the value should be, uh, we're just going to go ahead and paste it in here. Now, I'm gonna, I guess I'll leave that the same. Um, the KI here, put the KI here as well. And you should be able to just leave all these values as default. Always just select auto here and that'll just set these to the correct values. Um, and then the next thing we need, I've already done the IMSI and the ADM. So that should be pretty much everything you need to do. Um, like I said, I'm just going to leave all of this stuff as default. And I always just click same with GSM here and that populates anything that is mismatched between the two. And with that, I think we're good to write the card. So we'll just go ahead and select that here. All right, and the card was written successfully. Oh, and the one last thing I forgot to specify is the ICC ID. Uh, this can pretty much be anything, uh, but I just leave it default from this tool because like I said, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is basically the SIM card number and is just used to identify uh, the specific SIM card. Um, and since you can't use multiple SIM cards with the test set anyway, um, it doesn't really matter. But if you do wanna use multiple, or at least try to use multiple, you'll have to make sure this is a different value per each SIM card if you have multiple. Uh, but for this instance, this data that we've written should indeed be correct and should be all we need to change. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the SIM card from the smart card reader. And from here, we can go ahead and set up the test set and put the SIM card in the phone and see if we can connect the phone to the test set. All right, so actually before we go ahead and start testing uh, this test set and connecting with the phone and whatnot. Uh, I did want to give you, or I did want to tell you about an interesting anomaly that I had to rectify in this specific test set right here. Now, this specific test set I was given uh, quite a few years ago, as I mentioned, and when I got the machine, it had this weird Anite firmware. As you can see, there's a sticker down there that says Anite on it, uh, but it had this Anite firmware on it, which didn't allow you to use the test set as a standalone test set and instead was designed for use with either other hardware or control software uh, to control and perform actions on the test set uh, from an external device. Now the way I actually got around that was I bought a second test set, as you can see I've got right there off eBay, 
and that had the original firmware that these normally ship with. And I actually dumped its EEPROMs. There's four of them on the bottom of the board, uh, which I'll actually take this one apart and show you in just a bit. Uh, but I took those four EEPROMs, dumped them, and wrote the dumps from the stock test set onto this test set. And that got it back to basically being a fully functional test set once again without that odd firmware. Now there are a couple issues that cropped up by doing that, but they're very minor and don't seem to really affect the test set in any way. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the test set open here, uh, show you the inside because it is quite interesting in there and show you those EEPROMs uh, that I had to reflash to get the stock firmware back on this machine. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the test set open and you can see it is very interesting inside. You can see it's got a ton of this RF cabling uh, that interconnects between all these different expansion boards. You can see that plug into those style connectors down there. And yeah, obviously these machines are pretty modular and they can be ordered with different options and whatnot. Um, so that is why, you know, there's these cards that go in these slots. Uh, but this particular unit is actually pretty well optioned. It has almost every option that these could have shipped with, I believe, um, including all three radios, uh, GSM 900, P or DCS 800, and PCS 1900, and also has the improved uh, RF board here at the back, uh, which has some extra reference inputs and whatnot. Um, so we go ahead and flip the unit over on its side here. Here are the EEPROMs that I had to modify in order to restore the stock firmware onto this device. Um, so you can see there's four of them right here. Uh, they're 512K in size each, if I remember correctly. Um, so that gives you a total storage size of two megabytes. Now, of course, I will put the dumps that I took from the original unit in the video description if you want to uh, try to flash that onto your own device. Um, if yours has the Anite firmware, because it seems to be pretty common uh, for at least these devices on eBay to come with that odd firmware. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the device and begin the testing. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the unit reassembled and I've also got two antennas plugged into it. Uh, you can see I've got one uh, dipole antenna here. Um, it's actually the only one I can find that uh, was suitable enough for this and actually had the correct connector on it here. And then for the auxiliary antenna, I've got this Cisco LTE uh, antenna for one of those Cisco ISR cellular receivers or cellular failover devices there. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and power the device on and let it boot up. So here's one of the first issues that cropped up when I uh, flashed that firmware from the other device onto here. Uh, basically, it, I guess, overwrote a checksum or potentially calibration data uh, that was in the original firmware. And now it says the unit is not properly calibrated because that checksum is, is a mismatch. There's a mismatch of the checksum there. Um, but you can pretty much just ignore that. We're not really using this for any sort of precise testing at this point. This is more of a novelty. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and select OK and let it finish booting up. And as you can see, the uh, screen is a passive matrix LCD, so the quality of it is not all that great. And here's the second issue that cropped up. I guess this Anite device had or the firmware that was in it was designed for a different uh, RXTX module, as you can see right there. Um, but despite that message, everything seems to still work exactly as intended. So uh, I don't really think that's anything to worry about that much. All right, so now that the unit has booted up here, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is slightly increase uh, the transmit power of the uh, carrier here just because the default setting is pretty low and even with the phone literally right next to it, it doesn't have full signal strength. Um, so we're just gonna go in here and just increase this slightly. We're not gonna go crazy with it, just up to about 70 decibels or negative 70 decibels rather, dBm. And that should be all you need to do. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this 
exit out of the parameters there. And now we are ready to connect a phone to the device. So as you can see here, I've got the original iPhone with that SIM card we just programmed. Uh, you can see it's still got no SIM there, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and install that SIM card and uh, I'll show you exactly what it does. All right, so as you can see, I've got that SIM card in there ready to go in. So we'll just go ahead and push it in and see what happens. And as you can see, it got a connection. You can see it detects a carrier there at full signal strength uh, with the name of 101. And I think you can actually change that in the SIM card, though I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and as you can see here on the test set, it actually shows the IMSI of the SIM card and the IMEI of the actual phone itself. So if we go ahead and go into that, I'll show you that here. So yeah, as you can see, here's the IMEI of the phone ends in 4451 and funnily enough the IMEI in the test set ends in 4450 so I don't know uh, what the deal is there but that's a little interesting still works nonetheless um, so now with the phone connected we can actually go through and do various things with it so if we go into the single test option here you can see there's quite a few options we can go through here there's synchronization registration, which obviously we don't really need to do since that's already been done automatically. Call setup, call termination, handover, uh, some transmitter tests, receiver tests here. And then these are some more functional tests you can do with the phone. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just do a basic call setup test. And basically what that'll do is it'll ring the phone, you can answer it, but from there it doesn't really do much else. Uh, so go ahead and run the test. And as you can see, the phone is receiving a call, so we can go ahead and answer it. And as you can see here, the test status is pass because, of course, like I said, it doesn't do anything else but set the call up. So we go ahead and exit this, and we run the call termination test. That should end the call on the phone for us. So we'll go ahead and try that. And that exact, is exactly what it did. So another test that I found pretty interesting is uh, in the speech slash SMS tests here. Uh, we can actually do, we can actually receive some audio from the mobile phone or send some speech to the mobile phone. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is I'll just select receive speech from the mobile phone and then I'll go ahead and just leave a test message and then play it back through the other options. So let's go ahead and run that test. So you can see the test set first calls us here. Go ahead and answer. And now we can speak. This is a test of the voice recording on the test set. And it only allows you to record up to 10 seconds. Uh, as you can see, the result is passed here. So we can go ahead and end the call. And now what we can do is go back and select send speech to mobile. And in theory, it should send the speech that we just sent to the device back to the phone. So let's try that. And as you can see, that worked as intended. Um, so the last interesting test we can run here is actually sending a text message, your SMS, from the test set to the phone. Um, so in order to do that, we can go back here. We can select point to point message send, and we can actually edit some of the parameters here. We can uh, change the message text, which I'm just gonna leave as default. It just sends this string and a bunch of these characters here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get out of that. And with that, we're just gonna go ahead and run the test. And as you can see, the iPhone received the message. So we'll go ahead and select view here. And you can see all the characters that were sent from the test set. 
as you can see, it's not exactly the same. I guess there's some encoding differences between uh, the test set and the uh, iPhone, uh, but it did indeed work. Now, the one thing I haven't been able to figure out is actually how to send a text message from the phone back to the test set. Um, if I go to the test to receive a point-to-point -point message and try to run it, it says send a message to it, uh, but if I send a message back to the same number it used and try to send, it uh, just doesn't work, as you can see there. Um, that might just be because there's a different number you're supposed to send to to get it to the test set, uh, but I actually haven't been able to figure that out yet, so fortunately we can't send a message back to the test set. So go ahead and abort that test, exit there, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can show you here. Like I said, practical use of this thing is <laughs> there's really none, uh, but as a novelty and as it was intended to test functionality on mobile phones, it does indeed work as intended. So that has been the overview and demonstration of this Raycal 6103E digital radio test set with a first-generation Apple iPhone. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video.